<clears throat> sure, appreciate it. Okay, hello, 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 hello. Welcome to NWA Power, episode 13. And now, after a rocky little... I haven't reviewed this since, like, the first episode, to be honest. And, uh came into scheduling, so at least I have time to now go over what has happened. So it seemed like Nicole has turned into a babyface world champion into a heel, got his own faction named Strictly Business from a couple weeks back. Camille that was supposed to be against Nicole just turned turn, turned back into a uh, into an associate of Nick Aldis, part of the faction Strictly Business involving the wild card that are also former NWA World Tag Team Champions. And they came over Tim Storm going over what uh, what Camille was thinking after what happened the past week and uh, why Nick Aldis didn't want to compete against him in the tournament qualifying match and only allowed one of the wild cards to face them and then disrespect and call the uh, Tim uh, Nick Aldis coward while Camille smacked him in the face. Then we had a tournament qualifying match against Ziggy Dice against Caleb Conley. And Caleb Conley, the last couple of episodes I watched of NWA Power, pretty much a perennial jobber. But it came up with him at least uh, showing up that he has some offense. And he did. Pretty good uh, suicide dive that he had from the ring. Decent strikes. Uh, I think there was one. Can he, uh, they continue putting uh, Ziggy Dice didn't show offense until the second half of the match. Where it's a five minute time limit for qualifiers. A bicycle kickoff to uh, Caleb Conley that came with a think a, a scoop slam. A jumping moon saw that nearly took away. Uh, K uh, Ziggy Dice from near the end of the match where Caleb Conley was pretty much doing alright, but no one really cared about the match because Ziggy Dice looks ugly, and Caleb Conley loses nearly every match in the show. So, it came up with a back body drop. <clears throat> no, it ended with a roll-up. A uh, just a rattle and roll up where it was a roll of victory when Caleb Conley nearly had the victory won. And uh, Ziggy Dice is now qualified for the tournament. So, yay. NWA TV title used to have a red strap and now it's a black strap. So, I guess okay. No one really cared about the match. It doesn't really tell you much except Ziggy Dice is going to be a more heel, heelish competitor. Then Aaron Stevens interviewed. The question and Mark Stevens or Shooter Stevens, that Stu Barrett now wants to call him because uh, he's the new commentator thanks to Jim Cornette over controversial issues was uh written out of the show as their colored commentator that literally has most of the history of NWA so kind of you know being a manager and sort of booker of some short some sorts a uh, shocker that he's not. Still commentating because he, you people like Jim Cornette still, even though he's a out of touch old fart piece of shit that always wants to whine about how current talent deals with and is dealt with in major wrestling promotions nowadays. And I can understand some of his reasons, but Jesus Christ came up with a uh, shooter, Steve. Pretty much, yeah, he said that he wants all the belts. So he wants him in the question. The question kept funnily saying karate. While Stevens was just going over, just saying uh, karate. He now has a goatee, shaving most of his beard off last time I see him. Now, God, why? He's just looking like a terrible mix of every fake karate master you've seen around the world as a celebrity. And the promo was at least okay. Last time he was playing an actor, now he's just a fake karate master. He calls himself the NWA third degree uh, national champion. And it'd be interesting that they put two mid card titles. Uh, their next pay per view will be called Hard Time. Somehow, a lot of pay per views January have hard except the Rumble. 
and Wrestle Kingdom. Seriously, there's Hard to Kill for Impact Wrestling coming up next week, I think, or in two weeks. And uh, we have a uh, hard time. So, interesting enough, I don't think I'll be doing an Impact review until later, until I feel like it. Uh, yeah. Interesting promo. Decent way to put up some heat and to show how ambitious Stevens is and how we don't know if we can take him seriously or not. Makes me know the question is going to be there in this corner and anytime he has a title defense. And I still haven't seen him in a one-on-one -on -one match since he lost a two out of three falls match with Ricky Stark. So, yeah, it's been a while since I watched NWA Power. If you guys would update me, because I heard, like, shows getting decent reviews. People don't mind the show. I think it's in a decent time limit, an hour for release. Traditional set one-on-one -on -one match. It's not as over-the-top as, as uh, Dynamite Impact or WWE. Decent traditional, de decently tamed pro wrestling that I think anybody can get behind. And the person who came up will surprise you. It's on the thumbnail if you guys don't get it. Uh, yeah. ODB next up against Thunder Rosa with the NWA Women's Champion watching on commentary. And, uh, yeah. Decent match. Thunder Rosa came along. She had a double foot stomp on, uh... On the second rope, when ODB stuck her head there, uh, stuck her head there during a trip. Big back and forth brawling. I thought it wasn't that much. ODB. I watched most. Most of the guys on the roster came from TNA. Oh, uh, Nick Aldis is Magnus. James Storm, freaking Ken Anderson. All these dudes TNA. So is ODB, former Knockouts Tag Team Champion, and uh, Knockouts Women's Champion. But by God, what a uh, there's a lot of badly shit, except James Storm and Cole Cabana, and they call this, and Tim Storm. Uh, freaking ODB, I don't know if she is fat or just incredibly out of shape. Came around looking like she can only do brawls, and there were some times she was going for, like, a European uppercut, and all it looks like she was doing was, uh, taking a few bumps. Thunder Rosa looked okay, but you were facing up against a washed-up ODB. Where she was getting a few of the pops when she was doing a clothesline or she got clotheslined by Thunder Rosa. And Thunder Rosa, she's a average size. She's like the height level, but like not girth as ODB. So it was uh, shocking that these women were going back and forth. Back and forth. But we knew who was the baby face and who was the heel. So, yeah. Thunder Rosa won clean. It was decent, like, stretch of power. But off a of backstabber, uh, no surprise, Thunder Rosa was going to pin ODB with a, with Iceland Key, the the NWA Women's Champion. She was former Knockouts Champion. I think she was on Impact a couple of years back uh, to challenge her anytime, anywhere. So, yeah, I guess all right segment just to build up that they're going to have a title match come soon, come hard time, so... Yeah. By the way, unique name, NWA Hard Time for the pay-per-views. Can't wait. I can't wait. They call this came out later for an interview and ch chanting a lot of coward things. He's been using the wild card or any other excuse not to face Tim Storm for the NWA Heavyweight Champion, but he's feuding with Rick Morton. I mean, Rick Morton because uh, uh stuff that happened later in the afternoon. And calling him a coward, not putting his title defense up. And brung up uh, the commentator was so still curious over all of these. He's been curious since episode one. Why Camille isn't talking or why in the world did he slap Tim Storm? And uh, uh, Nick Aldis doing anything to like... He even called... He even said that he's not. She's not getting insurance policy. She is a member of Strictly Business. So yeah, interesting promo, I guess. It, it just brung over what was happening over most of this. Rookie Morton then uh, tried to call out the uh, young generation and uh, bring up uh, Nick Aldis. Said that uh, Rookie Morton is a great guy for the tag division. I really didn't care. Thanks. He's 
literally like Ric Flair's age, and we're trying to bring up that oh, you're also a been you attack, you're you're a tag team legend, you're not a singles legend. And it's like that's okay, but no one really cares. I know I've been blabbering for the last few minutes, but I really didn't care that your NWA world champion of this current generation is literally one of the better world champions. Thanks. We know he's legit. He's built like he's legit, and he's dressed like he's legit, and he can actually beat you in a wrestling match. So, uh, kind of weird that he's challenging men over 50, like Ricky Morton, and he's feeding with Tim Storm. He's not facing guys like Ken Anderson. Thanks, he's got a freaking beer belly. He's fat, and he's, he's not getting promo time. Uh, Freaking, I don't know with Eli Drake, even though he's over the most charismatic guy in the in the show, and he and we used to know before that he can be a prime main adventure. It seems like they just wanted to feed with more of the guys from the mid card. They literally just James from Colt Cabana and Ken Anderson. And Ricky Starks faced off against uh, Nick Aldis in a qualifying match. That draw, that took a draw, over time running out after uh, Nick Aldis had Ricky Sharks in the cloverleaf and he held on for so long, dragging himself over to the ropes for near a minute and a half until uh, <clears throat> time ran out. Ricky Morton tried to call Nick Aldis for uh, call out Nick Aldis for an extra five minutes for the match to continue and for the match to not end the draw and a false finish and Nick Aldis declined. Coming out to him leaving and being called a coward again and saying that he, he'll feel like he won the lottery. Like a major heel heat bullshit here. I'm going to, I have my AEW review getting ready. So I'm going to go over who played the major heels because that was funny. Uh, MJF is funny. Dick douchebag heel. But he, I'm like, I hate you. You're too cocky for your own good heel. And of course, Chris Jericho heel work. And it's by God. Uh... A really good segment. Nick, it was a slow up in a match. Ricky Starks had a uh, fast pace. He was trying to go over the corner, exhaust, uh, and use more of his innovation in the ring. That's where he does uh, DDT, elevated, elevated uh, DDT, drop kick. Nick Aldis, more on the offensive. Getting shoulder tackles, getting huge chops back and forth. A missile drop kick off Ricky Stark. It, I mean, it was a decent match for at least below 10 minutes. And it, the show was an hour for qualifiers for this tournament. And they said, they even did like a list. So, the tag team partners for one group while, uh, see, when Trevor Murdoch was on for an interview, he got an opponent and two of the tag team partners had to face off against themselves for qualifying rounds come next week. So that was interesting. I liked uh, Tim Storm's promo that he was like, he's there on the flyers. He's the guy that fans pay their money to see. He should be here uh, being a man and getting to his wrestling match. So that was a good promo of Tim Storm playing the baby face, even though he's like 50 something years old. He's obviously should it be GM or something other than legit, like a babyface pro wrestler. So that was nice. Then we had the wild cards uh, didn't come out for their main event. That was a triple threat tag team match involving uh, Eli Drake, James Storm, Cole Cabana, Ken Anderson, and the wild card. But the wild card did not come out until later in the after, after the match for some apparent reason other than to prepare a um, six man tag. I think an eight man tag involving uh, I think the wild card himself. And Scott Steiner. Well, it's going to be the Midnight Express. Whoever the hell they can get. Interesting way to book up a main event. But that was totally out of nowhere. So the referee was like, screw it. Just wrestle. 
Just do it. Oh my god, I was about to die. Okay. So, it was Beer Belly, Headlocks, Ken Anderson looked fat, James Storm, and Eli Drake was just going over ground game until we saw a drop kick. Uh, big ass Hurricane O'Rana from James Storm. It was a shocker to see the size. Ken Anderson just did punch, kick, punch, kick, DDT. Then we saw, like, build ups for tags. Just, uh, like, build up for, like, maybe a breakup because I think over the time Ken Anderson and Colt Banna build up a relationship until, like, they told, they told, the commentators told me that Ken Anderson kind of has an anger issues. And it came off a near fall where Colt Banna does that running through, roll up using a double leg hook thing that he lays down up front for, so we can uh, hook the two legs up for a pin. Had a near fall, and it usually gets a surprise victory. Uh, he didn't get, didn't get there, because it was a near fall. Ken Anderson lo uh, lost his gasket, and, uh, uh, put his hands on the referee, and obviously that's a no-no anywhere. Caused a DQ, and James Storm and Eli Jake pick up a DQ victory for the finish of the main event of NWA Power. And, uh, <clears throat> not the best way to op uh, leave off your show when you actually... Show that you're about to put your prime uh, t tag team of a big faction, maybe the only faction on NWA, to show up, and they didn't show up just to be part of another promo to sell another match, and that's kind of underwhelming. You could just challenge them after they maybe pinned two uh, one of the tag teams in the ring. So shocker enough. Uh, wow. That's, and uh, the surprise partner was uh, Scott Steiner, so that's a shocker. I thought that was, I thought it was going to be somebody a bit younger, or at least a different heel, like Josephus, I think Josephus is playing uh, the question, so yeah, a question mark, so yeah, interesting, not really. It's cool to see Scott Steiner again and Holler if you hear me. It looked like they were using stock audio footage, audio from a Monday Night Raw episode. Thanks to Center with Holler if you hear me. I know he used that in like WCW, but it felt like stock footage until the music got a bit lower. So yeah, it was an interesting way to end off the show. <clears throat> Trevor Murdoch came with a smile on his face because last time I saw him, he was with the. Uh, he was getting matches for uh, NWA contract, and now he's an M NWA competitor, and he's <clears throat> now qualified to face off against uh, an opponent, and he'll be facing off against Tom Tom Latimer. I don't know who that is. Dave Dawson will face off against his brother Zane Zane. Uh, I think Zane Dawson. <clears throat> for a match qualifier come next week. So that's interesting enough. A uh, bit of a weird mix-up of matches. I don't know who Tom... What the fuck is his name? Tom Latimer. I'm going to look this up. Because I don't know who the fuck Tom Latimer is. I'm not trying to feel rude, bro. I, I I really don't know who Tom Latimer is, and this is interesting because usually I know a lot of indie wrestlers, or at least legends. Oh, it's Bram! It's Bram from Impact. It's only thirty-three. I thought he was older. Interesting, they got Bram. I thought he was uh, on NXT, but now he's on uh, Impact. I mean, now on NWA. So, uh, good for Bram. This show gets me a 6 out of 10. I liked it. The match was quick, easy, told a decent story. Uh, the heel work of uh, Nick Aldis was pretty good. 
and how they're trying to build to match to match. I felt like that tournament qualifiers were decent. They didn't even need to make it a five, ten minute match for Ricky Starks and Nick Aldis because we know it was a lopsided victory and we didn't know Ricky Starks was going to hold that long and last long with the world champion. So that was a shocker moment, an uh, interesting moment that it ends in a draw after Ricky Starks didn't tap out. And uh, the comments after the match was pretty good. And uh, Ricky Morton, though, really, like, saw really unsulking, like, you, you're telling me, like, all the people are feuding with our world champion. While we don't know who's facing off against the national champion, we don't know who's, uh, who's the major favorites for the tournament, for the TV title. Thunder Rosa beats up an old person out of ODB. And, uh, fucking Scott Steiner, of all people. It was cool, at least, to see Scott Steiner again. Because I haven't seen him since that one time they made a f uh, made fun of, uh, Scott Steiner in his math promo when he had, uh, P.D. Williams with him that used to be, like, his, uh, sidekick back on TNA. So that's at least interesting. The show, it didn't get me angry. Every match was, uh, decently timed. Didn't overdo it. Weren't trying to be like oversell near falls and try to get the crowd pumping. It's a small crowd, small show. They try to do up anything so you can get the gist and get ready for next week. And that's what I find that hooked me into NXT back then. <clears throat> and it hooked me into NWA Power. And I can see why people have so much high expectations for and think this and for these shows that are going a full calendar year. Like we're actually going to see a full calendar year of NXT on USA. We're going to see a full calendar year of AEW Dynamite. Full calendar year of uh, Fox's SmackDown, Friday Night SmackDown. And a full calendar year of eight of NWA Dynamite, even though I think it was airing since the summer. Uh, less, uh, like uh, late August. So, I have a lot, because now there's a lot of wrestling people are going to be watching. Uh, watch, I uh, watch Impact. Power, the only shows that I don't promise to watch that often is NXT. That's because it's still a developmental brand that nobody's going to be wasting like nearly every day so they can watch Raw. A bit of backstage uh, power, impact, NXT. It's dynamite. It's SmackDown. It's too much. It's too much pro wrestling. And sometimes I think people think it's a blessing because they're a big fan of wrestling. But I don't think they know it's still a televised program. And that's for some people, that's too much. <clears throat> but this gets a 6 out of 10. Enjoyable. Easy to consume. And the matches weren't that long. And I think that's fair enough for certain people that think that they just need to get the gist of it. Know the wrestlers. Know what they mean. And uh, there's a birth of the wrestling faction. That's always a positive in my book. Because you need to know who's going to be the top legit guys that you want leading your company once the... Uh, you want as a main face because we know Nick Aldis. We want another wild card. Camille doesn't speak still, even though we're 13 episodes in still. <clears throat> so, uh, interesting show. Went, ain't that bad. Hopefully, you guys watch it. It's on NWA. They do their shit on YouTube, so anybody could watch it. And I think that's cool. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Join the DSP Nation. Hopefully you like, comment, and subscribe. So you can catch up on anything pro wrestling or sports related. I'll try to put up some entertaining stuff. I'll try to put any other stuff. Like a TV show or a movie. Maybe I'll do a bit of anime. But, uh, you know, it comes into the my uh, like limited interest factor. So that will come into what I'm willing to upload for the spare time I have. Before I start the semester in a few weeks. So, yeah. So, please. Do that stuff I just said. So, you get more into the news. Thank you for watching.